Greetings viewers, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we've got my buddy Brian's 2006 Impreza 2.5i here. Uh, he brought it to me because he is about to pass it down to his daughter. Uh, Brian purchased this car brand new as a one owner Impreza, and it currently has 322,000 miles on it. And it is a testament to Subaru's quality. Uh, I believe the only major service that this car has had in its entire life was a head gasket replacement, which of course being an EJ253 is a mandatory service uh, due to those notoriously bad factory head gaskets peeling off at about 120, 150,000 miles. I believe he got to about 160, 180,000 range before that one was done. Uh, but we're at 322 now and no further issues with the head gaskets. Uh, so I'm pretty sure we are good on that. I did not do the head gasket replacement on this car. It was a shop in uh, around Charlotte, North Carolina. Can't re remember exactly who it was, uh, but what is it not me? Uh, so like I said, today we're in, gonna do a timing belt replacement, water pump replacement, uh, replace coolant, probably do cam and crank seals, uh, just as preventive, as a preventative. Uh, I don't know how they look yet because I haven't got inside of it, but uh, might as well go ahead and replace them for the $20 they cost. And I believe he brought me a set of spark plugs for it and a few other things. Didn't really get into it. All the parts are in the back seat. Uh, so that said, we're not gonna do a how-to step-by-step video on this one. I've done plenty of time and belt videos on single overhead cam Subaru engines. It's gonna be the same procedure. I'll link those in whichever corner cause I can't remember <laughs> which it is to the actual step-by-steps. Uh, but I've had plenty of you in the comments ask me before about how long does a time belt job take and I've never actually timed myself. So I figured we'd set up the camera and do a time lapse on this one and time it. I'm not gonna go for a all out speed run, just gonna take it at normal pace, just to give you an idea of how long you can expect it to take. Um, of course, you've gotta consider that I've done umpteen hundred of these things and most of you that are watching is probably gonna be your first one. Uh, so don't expect to keep pace with me on your first time doing a time belt water pump job on a Subaru. Uh, but that said, I'm gonna go ahead and set up the camera uh, bring up a timer on my phone and uh, get the time lapse going, get this water pump time belt job knocked out before I get cooked out here in the South Carolina sun. Already starting to roll sweat. It's already getting about 80 something degrees, but the humidity is through the roof as usual. Uh, so that said, let's go ahead and get to it.
So I'm not sure if this video is going to see the light of day or not. I had some technical issues. Uh, if you notice, there was a gap there in the video. My battery died on the camera and did not realize it. I don't know how long it was not recording for. I also paused the camera during the cleaning process. Didn't want to count that. There was a lot of cleaning to do on the block, oil pump, uh, the timing covers, everything just because you know it's a 2006 model with 322,000 miles. So it's accumulated some uh, crud over the years that previous uh, people were pairing it apparently did not clean. Uh, so I'll pause the video for that. Um, I don't even remember what the full time was now. I think it was a minute, uh, hour and 20, hour and 30. Uh, the heat really zapped me and uh, slowed me way down. Pretty sure normally in a shop I can get them done under an hour, but uh, it really uh, beat me up under the sun today. Still scorching. It's not as bad as it's been the rest of the week. It's about 10 degrees cooler, but it's still unbearable. So I don't know exactly if I'm going to piece this video together. Like I said, um, next video is we're going to be back working on the sandbar uh, last night or the night before last. I can't remember which. Uh, went to Up Garage. If any of you are familiar, Up Garage is a um, used parts seller in Japan. Uh, it's kind of like a salvage yard, but for aftermarket parts, so wheels and tires and exhaust systems and uh, stock parts too. I've bought several things from them in the past. I bought the Advan RG2s that are on patches from uh, Kruber and Up Garage. And um, I bought uh, my GTB projector headlights for the LL Bean and several other JDM pieces. So I ordered a set of Tanabe SSR Type C wheels in gold for the little sandbar. 14 by 5 plus 45 should fit perfectly. Um, I'm not sure what tire I'm going to run on it yet. I believe a 165, 65, 14. It might bump up to a 175. Uh, just depends on clearances. I'll know more when the wheels get here. I believe they're going to get here. At some point next week, uh, that was the estimate I got, was between two and five business days from DHL. DHL don't play. Uh, most of my stuff I get from Amazon uh, Japan comes DHL, and I normally get stuff within two days of shipping from Japan by DHL. Uh, so they don't play. Um, other than that, we're going to have a video coming up doing a full inspection of the sandbar front to back uh, in depth. Every single thing I found wrong with it. Uh, I know basically what repairs it needs from my inspection in the guy's driveway uh, that I bought it from, but uh, I haven't really tore into it. Um, check spark plugs, things of that nature. I'm sure we're going to need electrical tune-up. Uh, I know a motor mount is uh, torn. I know that I'm going to go ahead and do a time belt water pump set on it just because I don't know the age, just so I can reset all of my service intervals and keep track of it. Um, other than that, I'm not exactly sure what else. Um, thanks to, I can't remember who it was in the comments, I can see your profile picture, but I can't recall the name right now, sorry, uh, you put me on to another YouTuber named Moto Cheese. Uh, check his channel out, he's got a, I believe a Daihatsu Hijet, and I believe he's got, it might be two Daihatsus, I can't remember, one's a dump bed, one's a not, uh, non-dump bed. And uh, he's got a lot of great videos on Japanese mini trucks, uh, giving me some ideas, things I want to do. Uh, one of which was a, a very slim um, Android based uh, DVD, CD, TV, this double DN radio uh, that you can put like a speedometer app on and access any other Android apps for. Uh, I've got that same app that he used on my phone. I've been using it just to check and uh, get myself. Uh, oriented with the conversion while driving from kilometers to miles per hour and see exactly where uh, my speedometer is because it's probably off a little bit. Uh, but other than that, I mean, we're going to do some modifications to this thing. Uh, may do an exhaust on it. Uh, not sure what else. I was doing some research as well. And an aftermarket uh, salvage parts seller in Japan does have a full air condition uh, swap for this vehicle. Uh, I don't believe I'll be buying that because it was like $980 plus $1,100 shipping from Japan, which is quite absorbent for what it is. Uh, but I do plan to retrofit some way air condition on this sandbar if I can. Um, I would like to do the fuel injection supercharge swap on it, get rid of the carburetor. 
Um, but piecing it together and things of that nature, I don't know if the cylinder heads are different. I know one is an EN07Z uh, and one is a Y between the carbureted and the supercharger. I can't remember which Y or Z is supercharged at this point. Uh, but I don't know if the cylinder head's different, if there's different um, compression ratio in the supercharged engine compared to the naturally aspirated engine. Uh, I know I need a wiring harness, I need a cam sensor, crank sensor, uh, ignition coils, PCM, so quite a bit of stuff to go fuel injected and supercharged. Um, might end up selling my sandbar for a supercharged fuel injected one just to you know, get rid of the hassle of having to do the conversion. Uh, but for now, I'm pretty happy with it. If I can get it in tip top mechanical shape where I'm not worried about uh, any kind of breakdowns, you know, it's still a very fun vehicle to drive. And uh, my only real gripe is uh, sweating in the South Carolina heat with no air conditioning. Uh, but other than that, that'll pretty much round out this video. Thank you guys for watching. Hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you in the next one. Thank you.